Alrighty, here we go with the last set of notes in our vertebrates unit. This one on mammals, where we'll talk, just like in other units, about the defining characteristics and some of their organ systems. So there's six main characteristics of mammals that we're going to talk about today. Some of these guys you're probably familiar with. Uh, first off, all mammals are endothermic, so they're warm-blooded. They create their own heat, so as such they need to eat a lot of food, uh, a lot of calories to feed that fire. Uh, they all have hair or fur for warmth or for camouflage or for attracting mates, those sorts of things. All mammals have a four-chambered heart. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, all mammals produce milk in mammary glands. That's where they get their name. So even things like whales, uh, which are mammals, produce milk in mammary glands. Also, all mammals have a single jawbone. Amphibians and reptiles don't. You may recall when we dissected the frog, how they had the vomerine teeth and the maxillary teeth. Those were named as such because of the two different jaw bones that they have. And then uh, all mammals also have these specialized teeth, which I'm sure you're familiar with because we have them as well, but they have teeth for crushing, for grinding, and for slicing. So we've got um, slicing, crushing, grinding, all the different teeth. Reptiles, on the other hand, like this alligator down here, do not have these specialized teeth. They all pretty much look the same, kind of these uh, conical-shaped teeth that um, aren't as specialized as ours are. Now a little bit more about the circulatory system, because we love comparing and contrasting these circulatory systems. Uh, like I just said, we have a four-chambered heart, so we have a complete division between our two ventricles, so the oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated blood do not mix. So we have a complete division here, unlike what we saw in the reptiles and the amphibians. And of course we still have that double loop system, so we kind of have the best of both worlds now. We've got the first loop that goes up to the lungs, but it still slows down, but it's going to come back here to the heart where it's going to get sped up, but now it's not going to mix at all because there's a complete division there, and then it goes faster to the body and back to the heart and so on and so forth. So just to compare the different orders that we've been looking at so far, we've got our fish with their single loop system, and the problem with that is that the blood slows way down in the gills. A uh, good thing is it's a closed circulatory system, though, so there's no mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Reptiles and amphibians improved upon that by adding an extra chamber. So they have two atria, and so now they have two loops, so blood will come back to the heart to speed up. But you still have a little bit of mixing because there's no wall there. And, of course, in reptiles it's a little bit better because you have a little bit more of a wall, a little bit more of a septum, but not totally... Uh, divided, and then we've got our heart, like we just said, totally divided. So there's no mixing, and the blood speeds back up. So a little bit more about some mammalian groups. These aren't, strictly speaking, uh, taxonomic groups, but just kind of more informal groups. Um, three different groups of mammals. The first one are the pretty unique ones. These are egg-laying mammals, so these are called monotremes. So not a very, very big group, really just three species, one species of platypus and two different echidnas. This is a platypus, this is an echidna, mostly found in Australia and New Guinea. And there's marsupials, which you're probably more familiar with. There's 250 species of marsupials, and I'm sure you know that they're pretty famous for the fact that they're uh, underdeveloped newborn mature in the pouch, so like this kangaroo here. And again, mostly in Australia and New Guinea where these guys have evolved, but there is the Virginia opossum in the United States. And finally, there's the third group that we're most familiar with, because it's us, the placentals. Uh, there are 18 official orders of placental mammals, and in placental mammals, the young are going to mature completely in the womb of the mother, and we're named placentals because there's the structure called the placenta, which you can see over here. Here's a close-up of it. And this is what's going to be providing uh, oxygen and nutrients to the baby, and then also removing the waste from the baby. So it's providing everything the baby needs, which is why moms have to be careful about what they ingest and what they expose themselves to, because everything they expose themselves to, the baby is exposed to as well. Uh, here's just a few uh, placental orders. I gave you guys this uh, sheet as a handout so you don't have to write all this stuff down. Uh, the ones that are in bold are ones that I would like you to be familiar with for the test, but just a few things that yeah, I feel like you should be familiar with. Uh, you've got order of rodentia, so these are the rodents, squirrels, archinchilla, mice. This is the biggest order of placentals, so most things would be rodents. Lagomorphs, or lagomorpha, are the rabbits and hares. Then there's primates, which include us and the apes and also lemurs. Chiroptera are bats, carnivora, things with sharp pointy teeth, bears, dogs, otters, cats, lots and lots of things. 
ungulates are things that have hooves, so horses, moose, goats, pigs. Cetaceans are whales, so whales, dolphins, and porpoises. Uh, Sirenia are manatees. I think this one's kind of fun because manatees, sailors used to think of, uh, or think were mermaids, and so that's why Sirenia, like the sirens from uh, the Odyssey, so attracting sailors. And this one I think is kind of fun too. Proboscidea are the elephants, named because they have a large nose, also known as a proboscis. So just a couple of the orders. The ones I really want you to be familiar with are the ones that are in bold. So in addition to the cool advancements made in our circulatory system, a couple things I want to talk about. In the respiratory system, uh, we obviously have lungs with structures called alveoli, which are little sacs, basically, that increase surface area. So air would come in through your mouth and down your trachea, into your bronchial tubes and bronchioles, and eventually you're going to end in little sacs like bunches of grapes where oxygen will be exchanged. Um, and then we also have the diaphragm, which you saw when you were dissecting your rat. Uh, it's a sheet of muscle that controls breathing, so lowers the pressure which draws air into your lungs, and then when you relax, allows that air to, to leave. And then in our digestive system, kind of similar to the amphibian and reptiles, we have a large and a small intestine, so the same things, small intestines absorbing nutrients, large intestine mostly absorbing water. Now though, our small intestine has three sections, so where the amphibians had just a duodenum and an ilium, uh, we have a duodenum jejunum and ilium. Some mammals, like cows, also have an extra chamber off of their stomach called a rumen. Uh, others, at the same time, will have something called a cecum. Um, which is a small branch of the, between the small and the large intestine. And both of these contain bacteria to help these organisms digest plants. Something kind of interesting in the case of like cows, uh, they're eating that grass and they're not actually getting their nutrition from the grass. Really all they're doing is feeding the bacteria and getting the nutrition from the bacteria, which I think is pretty cool. So with that, we are done with our unit on vertebrates.